Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Mohammed Bilal and today we are going to discuss mallet finger. What is mallet finger? It is a finger deformity caused by disruption of the terminal extensor tendon distal to distal interphalangeal joint. This disruption may be bony or tendinous. This is tendinous disruption and this is bony disruption. The other name for mallet finger are baseball finger or drop finger. There are two types of mallet finger. Soft tissue mallet finger when there is disruption of the extensor tendon in zone 1 and bony mallet finger when there is an avulsion of the fracture segment of the base of the distal phalanx. So it will be called bony mallet finger. Mallet finger is most commonly encountered during sports activity involving the ball and it is more common in young to middle-aged males and older females and it frequently involves long ring and small finger of the dominant hand 74% of the bony mallet finger injuries involve the dominant hand whereas more than 90% of, of the injuries occur in the ulnar three digits mallet finger is inflicted by traumatic impaction blow usually caused by a traumatic impaction blow to the tip of the finger in extended position which forces the distal interphalangeal joint into force flexion. This is a ball and it has a direct impaction on the tip of the finger and it causes it to force flexion resulting in either fracture of the base of the phalanx or avulsion of the tendon. The other mechanisms are sharp or cutting type laceration to the Torsal interphalangeal joint area. Regarding the classification of mallet finger, we can classify either by Patel and Gerberman classification. Webby and Schneider classification system is for bony mallet finger, and Doily classification depends upon the mechanism and status of the soft tissue injury. Patel and Gerberman classify mallet finger into two acute and chronic. Acute mallet finger presenting within 4 weeks of injury, chronic mallet finger presents after 4 weeks of injury. Doily classify it on the basis of extent of soft tissue injury and presence or absence of fracture. It has 4 types, type 1, type 2, type 3 and type 4. Type 4 has further subtypes, type A, type B and type C. Type 1 is closed injury with or without small dorsal avulsion fracture. Type 2 open injury but without any loss of skin and tendon substance. Type, type 3 is also an open injury but with the loss of skin and tendon substance and type 4 is mallet fracture. Type 4 a distal phalanx physial injury in pediatrics. Type 4 b is fracture fragment involving 20 to 50 percent of the articular surface and type 4 c is fracture segment involving more than 50 percent of the articular surface. Baby and Schneider classification is depends upon the radio, radiological findings and it is a classification of bony mallet finger. It has three types and each of them has three subtypes. Type 1 when there is no subluxation of the distal interphalangeal joint. Type 2 is when the subluxation of distal interphalangeal joint is present and type 3 is epiphyseal and physial injury in pediatrics. The subtypes are type A, B and C. Type A when there is less than one third of the articular surface involved. Type B is one third to two third of the articular surface involved. Type 3 when more than two third of the articular surface involvement occurred. Patient with mallet finger usually present with a painful and swollen distal interphalangeal joint area following impaction injury to the finger usually involves the ball injury. On physical examination, fingertip rests at 45 degree of flexion motion and there is lack of active distal interphalangeal joint extension. Mallet finger is a clinical diagnosis. However, X-rays are done to rule out bony mallet finger and to see whether there is any subluxation of the distal interphalangeal joint. Mallet finger is initially treated with distal interphalangeal joint splint or mallet splint which is kept for 6 to 8 weeks and a splint is indicated for acute soft tissue injury less than 12 weeks old and non-displaced bony mallet injury. The basic principle is that 
it splints the distal interphalangeal joint and maintain free movement of the proximal interphalangeal joint this is proximal interphalangeal joint however movement is preserved at proximal interphalangeal joint area it is worn for 6 to 8 weeks volar splinting volar splinting has less complications than dorsal splinting hyperextension is avoided and progressive flexion exercises begun at 6 weeks various design of splints are available these are plastic stack splints stack splints thermoplastic and aluminium splint and overlaid finger splint the basic principle of all these splints are same is to maintain full extension or slight hyperextension at the distal interphalangeal joint the study support the use of splint in mallet finger okofor et al reported on 31 patient treated conservatively using splint with 5 year mean follow up and found high patient satisfaction despite an average 8 degree extension lag Gerberman et al showed that even delayed splinting of a mallet finger at an average of 53 days from the injury resulted in successful outcome with or without the presence of small fracture defined as less than 30% of the articular surface complication of splint are usually transient there may be skin ulceration and some extensor lag however this extensor lag does not appear to result in patient dissatisfaction or functional deficit now what is the treatment of acute closed extensor tendon rupture that is soft tissue mallet finger again the same principle distal interphalangeal joint splint for 6 to 8 weeks and then night splint for 2 to 6 weeks this allows the tendon to heal prevent stretching when splint is removed and provide satisfactory result surgical treatment of acute mallet finger usually it is indicated in all open injuries doily 2 and doily 3 in injuries with a large bony fragment with subluxation of distal interphalangeal joint i have marked it as a red because it is it is an absolute indication of surgical treatment of acute mallet finger whereas the relative indications are fracture involving 30 to 50 percent of joint surface that is doily 4b if these are unstable then it requires surgery patient who are intolerant to splint surgical treatment of acute bony mallet finger is either closed reduction percutaneous spinning or open reduction internal fixation in closed reduction percutaneous spinning either we can do k wiring or extension block wiring we have multiple option in open reduction and internal fixation pull through sutures small screws hook plate tension band and figure of 8 wire this is close reduction technique extension block pinning technique in which two k wires are used one k wire is passed through the distal phalanx tip across the joint held in extended position whereas other k wire is used to stabilize the evolved fragment of the bone This is extension block pinning technique. Two K wires are used to fix the joint. One K wire is used to fix the distal interphalangeal joint in extension, whereas other K wire is used to fix the bone fragment. Open reduction and internal fixation. Open reduction and internal fixation can be done by pull out suture technique and it is described by doily a zigzag dorsal incision is made a 0 0.035 inch k wire is passed longitudinally through the distal phalanx and then across the joint distal interphalangeal joint in held in extended position then the radiographs are taken to see the stability of this fragment if this is unstable if the fragment if the fracture fragment cannot be maintained in closer position to the major fragment use a pull out suture to hold it in a position this is pull out suture with a button held in position after closure 
a splint is applied to protect to protect the cave wire. <clears throat> Dameron conducted a biomechanical study that compared four different fixation techniques that is cave wire, figure of eight wiring, pull through wire and pull through suture. And it concluded that pull through sutures are biomechanically more stable with no loss of reduction when compared to the other technique. Acute open injury of the extensor tendon doily 2 and doily 3 requires primary repair of the tendon. The extension of skin laceration proximally may be required to grasp the tendon and mobilize it, mobilize it to its insertion. Roll suture or dermotinodermal suture usually sufficient to hold the insertion for healing. The repair can be protected with a transarticular K wire. This is dermotinodermal technique. Open reduction is done. The tendon is brought to the distal interphalangeal joint and multiple sutures are passed across the skin and across the both edges of the tendon and out through the skin and the one wound is closed by multiple knots and suture. Post-operative care of open reduction and internal fixation the Finger is temporarily splinted for comfort. The sutures are removed at 3 weeks. The K wires are removed at 4 weeks. The finger is splinted for additional 4 weeks to protect the repair. Progressive motion exercises are begun and continued until maximal function has achieved. Now what is the treatment of uh, acute mallet finger in children? It is usually caused by traumatic separation of the epiphysis. First reduce the, jaw, reduce the fracture with the hyperextension. Then extension splint of the distal interphalangeal joint is applied for 3 to 4 weeks. However, growth disturbance may occur. This is epiphyseal separation of the distal phalanx resulted in mallet finger. So the fracture is, is reduced by hyperextension and splint is applied for 3 to 4 weeks. What is chronic mallet finger? A a mallet deformity is considered chronic when splinting cannot correct the injury or more than 4 weeks has passed from the injury. Mallet injuries that present 4 to 8 weeks after injury without a fixed deformity should initially be treated with splint. The surgery is contraindicated if there is a fixed deformity of the distal interphalangeal joint. Multiple surgical options are available to treat chronic mallet finger, but the two most commonly used are secondary pair that is tenodermodesis and Fowler central slip anatomy. In tenodermodesis, excision of the part of the tendon and skin over the distal interphalangeal joint is done, repairing the full thickness defect that is both the skin and tendon are repaired with non-absorbable suture. The distal inter interphalangeal joint is placed in extension and immobilized by internal fixation and or splinting. And literature review support tenodermodesis that is Sorin and Goodwin reported a mean decrease of extension lag from 50 degree to 9 degree with a mean follow-up of 36 months. This is tenodermodesis procedure. The scar tissues are removed both the skin and the tendon substance scar are removed and multiple sutures are passed across the skin and through the distal segment of the tendon then through the proximal segment of the tendon and then out through the skin the wound is closed by knots before embarking on send fowler central slip anatomy what is central slip the central continuation of the extensor tendon is called central slip it is attached to the dorsal base of the middle phalanx exert an extensor force across the proximal interphalangeal joint this is a central slip and these are the lateral bands of the extensor tendon. The function of central slip is to extend the proximal interphalangeal joint whereas the function of the lateral bands is to extend the distal interphalangeal joint. Fowler central slip anatomy is done by transacting the insertion of the central slip thereby transmitting increased extension force and excursion to the terminal tendon. And there is a literature review which supports the Fowler Central Slip Tenotomy. 
with the center slip tenotomy demonstrated result with full extension in 4 out of 5 patients, none of these patients had a bony component to the injury. In another study, 26 out of 35 patients regained full extension after tenotomy, whereas 8 patients had residual deformity of 10 to 20 degree and 1 patient with a 30 degree. This is central slip and these are the lateral band. This is triangular ligament. The central slip is transacted immediately proximal to its insertion on the base of the middle phalanx. The lateral bands are triangular ligaments are preserved. So more extension force are transmitted through the lateral band and which result in the extension of the distal interphalangeal joint. Here is another view of follower central slip tenotomy. You can see there is a proximal migration of the extensor component and more force is exerted through the previously loosened lateral bands and it results in the extension of distal interphalangeal joint. Crawford classify the outcome assessment after mallet finger treatment and it has four outcomes excellent, good, fair and poor. Excellent outcome is when there is no pain with full range of motion at the distal interphalangeal joint. Good outcome when there is less than 10 degree of extension deficit is present but with full flexion and no pain. Fair outcome when there is 10 to 25 degree of extension deficit is present with no pain and poor outcome more than 25 degree of extension deficit or persistent pain is present. This is tabular presentation of uh, Crawford criteria for evaluation of uh, mallet finger. Excellent, good, fair and poor. Excellent, full, full extension, full flexion, no extension lag. Good, when there is 0 to 10 degree of extension deficit, full flexion, no pain. Fair, 10 to 10, 25 degree of extension deficit. Any flexion loss may be present but there is no pain poor when more than 25 degree of extension deficit. So extension deficit is one of the most important marker to observe the or to monitor the mallet fracture treatment. Other surgical option to treat chronic mallet finger. There are multiple surgical options available. We can do either tendon graft reconstruction or distal interphalangeal joint orthodesis. Distal interphalangeal joint orthodesis is indicated in painful stiff arthritic distal interphalangeal joint. At the end I have a quiz for you. This is a case of a 42 years old man who sustained left finger injury while attempting a catch a baseball for his son. He present with left long finger pain and inability to extend his middle finger at the distal interphalangeal joint. A radiograph after close reduction and splinting is shown what is the best course of treatment. So this is a radiograph after splinting and you can see there is a avulsion fracture that is this is bony mallet finger with, distal, with subluxation of the distal interphalangeal joint. How will you classify the injury? Webby and Schneider classified as a two-way whereas Doily classified as a 4B because there is less than 20% of the less than 50% of the joint surface involved. So how will you treat this case by either close reduction, percutaneous spinning, or open reduction and internal fixation? Indication for surgical management of this condition include volar subluxation of the distal phalanx even after distal interphalangeal joint splinting. There is another case. A 27 years old male present with a finger pain two days after suffering an injury while playing base basketball. Physical exam shows swelling of the distal interphalangeal joint with no evidence of open injury. A radiograph is shown. This is bony mallet finger. And this can be treated with mallet splint. So the summary of mallet finger. All acute reducible bony or soft tissue mallet finger are best initially treated with splints. 
bony mallet finger with more than 30% of articular involvement with joint subluxation are better better treated surgically acute open mallet fingers and chronic mallet finger deformity after failing a trial of splinting are best managed surgically however some extensor lag may be present thank you for watching subscribe and like for more videos